All right, here we go. The brand new Brew Bill X1 Pro conical fermented with Peltier technology. We're gonna go ahead and assemble this bad boy today. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, let's hop right in. This is the brains of the whole deal here. You got two cooling ports on the right with one heating port on the middle here. You got a power on off rocker switch on the left. It also comes with a power cord, of course. Uh, nice, well-built stainless steel enclosure. An Inkbird uh, PID controller. That's what you're gonna use to set all your temps. It also has a temperature probe that you're gonna stick in a thermal well. It's got a nice little bracket up top for you to mount on the wall. So this thing is nice and shiny. Then we'll move over to this uh, flex chamber. So it's got two ports on either side. I'm personally gonna replace the right or left port, whatever, with the ball lock valve so we can purge all the air out of here with CO2 so we can use it to dry hop. You can also use it to, you know, harvest yeast and uh, separate true. Plus, it's really nice that it has the two-inch TC port up top. This is going to definitely leave us a lot, enough room to uh, drop the yeast, and we shouldn't have any problem uh, getting hops up through this chamber. So another cool thing this thing comes with is this pressure pack. So it's got a little floating device at the bottom with two separate um Ball lock posts at the top, one for gas in, one for uh, beer out, liquid out, whatever you want to call it. And it's also got an extra one and a half inch port. You can see there's a little ring there, and I know I've seen those in the past on some of the corny cake lids, and it looks like you might want to use that to maybe tie a bag of hops to or whatnot. So that's what I think that's for. It comes with a nice two inch butterfly valve. This thing's built pretty well. If you see a little debris, don't worry. I actually already soaked these in PBW and whatnot, so they're not as shiny as uh, <laughs> what they were when they came out of the box here. Okay, all these are an inch and a half TC ports. This is actually going to be your sample port, so it's a nice little deal to have. This is your thermal well. I think it's probably about three or four inches, and we also got this blow-off tube which faces down, so that's always nice. They've included caps for every single one of the ports, just in case you didn't want to use it. We got one four-inch, uh, one two-inch, and two-inch-and-a-half, so those always come in handy. Here's the adjustable legs. comes with four of them. What I really like is it's a 3 8 inch post, which I happen to have four casters laying around. Um, so pretty standard size there. And a quick peek at all the silicone gaskets that it comes with, along with all these tri-clamp fittings that come part of the kit here. All right, enough with the little stuff. Let's take a look at the actual fermenter here. You got an inch and a half port right in the middle there. That's gonna be where your thermal well goes. Nice big large heat sink on this Peltier technology here with two big fans. Uh, this braided cable that's going down here is going to be what actually plugs into the controller box. Uh, one of these ports are gonna be for the cooling port and the other one's gonna be for the heating port. If you can see here, there's a Velcro, like outer insulated vest, and that can be removed. And I'll try to remove it here in a bit, uh, kind of show you guys. And you can also see it's got a, probably an inch to an inch and a half thick insulated jacket below that. And I already replaced my uh, casters here. Like I said, it's a standard 3 8 inch post. So we got a big 2 inch port down at the bottom, which is going to be nice. And you can also see that it has four stainless steel legs and it's also got supporting brackets in between all those so this thing's built pretty well and as you can see super nice polished stainless steel on the inside up top it has 11 gallons on the etched marking which they claim is a 14 gallon fermenter so i'd imagine uh just with the lid on everything that extra three gallons makes up for that uh, dead space then another thing you can kind of notice is uh, where they welded the legs to the fermenter. 
there's a few imprints. So that's kind of weird. I guess they could have done a little bit better of a job, but hey. Here's a look with the outer insulated jacket off. Pretty much want to rip that off to see if this thing is removable. By the looks of it, it's not. You're going to keep this on all the time. I did try to peel it back a little bit. It's like glued on there or something. Plus you can kind of get a little bit better of a look. It looks like there's a strap possibly going around this whole unit. That's probably the heating and cooling or whatever it is. So basically I kind of just had the question if I was able to remove this thing just in case I wanted to really clean it. And another question I'm actually going to reach out to Brewbilt is what happens in the event that this Peltier unit actually gets wet. Um, I'd imagine you don't want to get it wet, but that's absolutely a great question to ask. And last, Brewbilt hooks you up with some swag. A few pint glasses, uh, they hook you up with a hat, stickers, and some coasters. Hi ladies and gentlemen, so there we have it. The video's done. We showed you what this thing is made of. All the components, we put it together here. Next video, we're going to put this thing in the test. Cheers.